I will take you in a journey, a world that is unknown to many people, a world that only few people were able to dig down and see the reality of it. It has been through the history of mankind that the people will always ask and question themselves about this unusual phenomenon. And this is the world of demons, the world of jinn. They, they eat, they sleep, they have homes, they have religions. They were on this earth and they were causing a lot of mischief on the earth. And that is when Iblis, at that time, he was a jinn. He was part of their world. And he ascended. And he being a jinn, that he then asked Allah to send with him a group of angels to go back to the earth and to banish these jinns to try and curb the violence on the, on the earth. So Allah allowed that and he came, he did that and you know the jinns were now only a few in scarce places of the world. And Allah knew his intention so he wanted to show this. And he created Adam alayhi salam and then he told him to bow and then all the angels prostrated to accept Iblis. I am better than him. You created me from a smokeless fire, but you created him from a clay, from a dirt. I am better than him. And then Ibni said, You the one, O oh Allah, who led me astray. O oh Allah, give me a respite. Allow me to live until the day of resurrection. You calling them to believe, I will be there to distract them. You ask them to obey you, I will tell them not to obey you. You will tell them to avoid and abstain from evil acts, I will ask them to commit. You will tell them do not lie, I will tell them lie. I will approach them from the front, and from behind them, and from their right, and from their left, and you will not find most of them grateful to you. See, the word jinn means the one that eyes cannot see. We have three types of jinns. The first of the three types is the types that flies. They have a special power that enables them to fly and go places. Second type of jinn are the jinns that have the ability to take shape shape of humans, animals, and different beings. The third type of jinn are the jinn that resides and live with us, and they move in and out. And he created jinn from a special substance that is suitable for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he said he created him from purest form of fire. In where there's no smoke, no ash flying around, Allah has created jinn from there. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create them? What was the purpose of the creation? See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all wise, all knowing. When Allah creates, He creates for a purpose. Allah created them for the same purpose that He created us. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I have not created the jinn and the ins except to worship thee, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Humans and jinn. Both of us were blessed with intellect that allows us and enables us to develop. Also, we were given the will power to choose, to choose the right path or the evil path. Also, both of us are responsible and accountable for what we do. We both receive the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the messengers of Allah, from the jinn and from the ins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Quran, 
that some of them are true believers, others are not. Through the tongue of the jinn themselves, when they said, some of us are righteous and some of us are evil. And they said, and we do follow different paths, different way of life. We know, as every human being is created with an angel who encourages us to good, a guardian angel. At the same time, that guardian angel is in a struggle with an evil force that is with each and every individual. We might be thinking, sitting, reflecting on good things, normal things, and then all of a sudden, a bad idea seems to pop into our head. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu told us, every one of you has been assigned a companion from the jinn. And the companions asked him, even you, O Messenger of Allah? And he said, even me. However, Allah has helped me against him and he has submitted. And now he only tells me to do good. The area of demonic possession where the jinn may enter the body of a human being. Some people say, no, not, not possible. It's all made up. Reality is that the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah indicate that it is a reality. It is authentically narrated that a woman gave her child to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She said that he would be overcome by fits every day. And the Prophet opened the boy's mouth and he said, O oh, enemy of Allah, I am the messenger of Allah. Get out. He's obviously addressing an entity that had entered that boy. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he exercised. He treated people who were possessed. And in all of the earlier scriptures, this exists. So it is a reality also. But what happens is that people not knowing the truth about this relationship use illegitimate means today to treat these situations. How do we treat people who are possessed? Most people go looking for somebody who says that he has a bigger jinn who will come and chase out the jinn from the person who is possessed. This is shirk. The other way is to confirm, to do acts which confirm shirk in the presence of the possessing jinn and he will leave himself. We use Quranic recitation, we recite them with understanding and in this way over periods of time, sometimes quickly, sometimes it takes a long time, etc. But people get cured and this is the only legitimate way. Various communities where people are claiming to have this contact with the jinn and protection from the jinn and this and that and believe that if Muslims had that control and power, we would not have been defeated by the colonialists. Muslim fighters were going into battle, wearing these things, believing that these things made them impervious to, to bullets. Bullets would bounce off. But instead they died in thousands. The other area that collides with the world of the jinn is the area of magic. In the midst of it all, there are some people involved in real magic. And those people who are involved in real magic are not people who have powers that we don't have, but it is that they have made contact with the world of the jinn. And the jinn operate in collaboration with them. They ask you to do certain acts of shirk and you want what appears to be the power you do it, and they will do it for you. 
One of the most direct ways in which the world of the jinn collides with our world is in the area of fortune telling, whose goal is similar to that of Satan to draw us into shirk and disbelief. The evil from among the jinn who interfere in our world, how they're able exactly, Allah knows best. Once they have you, then you become one of their tools. Human beings are always worried about the future. We would like to know what is going to happen in the future. The fortune tellers are now telling you about your future. And they will ask you information about your present and your past. Run as far away from him as you can. The world of the jinn, with regards to fortune telling, remains an attractive world because you have some fortune tellers who give information which turns out to be accurate. So where did they get this knowledge from? Well, the Prophet Sallallahu he explained concerning the jinn that he spoke about, the first type that are aerial, that can leave our atmosphere into the higher reaches of the universe. They connect up with other jinns who hover near the first heaven. And when Allah gives commands to the angels, and these commands are passed down through the heavens, they are able to hear bits and pieces of information. And they relay this information down. In the process of relaying that information, comets and meteorites, etc., catch some of them and destroy them. But some information works its way down till it reaches that witch, warlock, fortune teller, and they pass that information on, accurate information. And Aisha asked about this to Rasulullah Should we go to these people for the accurate information? He said, no. She said, but sometimes they tell the truth. He said, it is one truth mixed with a hundred lies. That's the reality of the fortune teller. He said, whoever goes to a fortune teller, believing in what he is narrating, has disbelieved in what I brought, which was Islam. And even if we go to the fortune teller, out of curiosity, we are curious, you know, what's he going to say? We open up the horoscope. I don't really believe in the horoscope, but I'm curious to see what do they say. Now, if you go and you look at that, you read it out of curiosity, the Prophet Muhammad said, your prayers are not accepted for 40 days and nights. Know that the only way to deal with this world is by way of the Quran and the Sunnah.